Hello Himo friends and welcome to this new video. So this is a very short answer to the last The Game Theorist video, which by the way you can find linked in the video description, which talks about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now generally speaking most of this game by a pure historical point of view is, uh, well, crap, even for me which I am not a Viking history nerd, so... But anyway, in his video analysis, the Game Theorist talks about some HEMA related topics which I would like to address. So I will be really specific, I don't want to go through all the video, so just follow me in these four points which I want to analyze. The first thing I want to answer is related to using a single one-handed weapon, which in the Game Theorist's opinion leaves this second hand useless. Well, this is not true. Sword grabbing is a quite common technique in historical manuals. Crossguard and forward grabbing, push on the elbows, etc. are common too. So the free hand is extremely useful. It's so useful that, as you know, when I am using the two-handed sword, I generally leave the handle with my second hand when the sword grabbing option becomes possible. Having a second weapon of course is not bad at all, is even better, but having a free hand is not that bad anyway. The second topic I want to answer is about dual wilding. In the video, the game theorist states that it is possible to be offensive with only one side of the body at a time. I am not entering deeply into historical plays now, but I want to share a simple concept. If the weapons are following the same trajectory, you can attack with the same body rotation with both weapons. The attack can happen simultaneously, so one, it can be slightly delayed, so a fast one, two, or it can be really delayed, so 1, 2, depending from the situation. Thrusting with both weapons is even easier, by the way. So, it is possible to attack at the same time with both weapons? Yes, in many ways. Is it useful? Depends from the opponent, its equipment, its weapons, the context, etc, etc. One thing that the game theorist got right is the fact that dual wilding has most probably been mainly a dueling set of weapons, which is a very reasonable sentence in my experience. About the fact of dual wilding axes or axes and swords, I am not experienced enough on the few Viking sources existent, so check the Roland Vazeka channel which treats about this topic, namely Viking stuff, he may know far more than me about this topic. Again, you find the link in the video description. The third topic I want to analyze is related to the weird spiky renaissance shield generally called lantern shield. Now in the video the author question itself about how to attack with this thing, showing weird examples. Well the answer is by extending your arm, basically. This shield is structured to have the blade on the same axis of your arm extension, so it's quite easy. Thrusts are the most lethal attack possible, which end up finding minimal resistance, following also the same analysis in the video about arrows and minimizing the impact surface. So yes, thrusting is easy. Is it easy against armored opponents? Well, it depends from the armor. Weird fantasy leather armor? You thrust in like butter. Mail? Depending from the quality of the mail, it can be hard or impossible. Plate? Not really. Anyway, as I said, thrusting doesn't require a lot of efforts against unarmored opponent or lightly armored opponents if you aim for soft tissues. Look at me dropping an apple over my blunt sword to understand it. The fourth and last topic is about dual wilding shields. Well, honestly speaking, dual wilding shields doesn't make a lot of sense if are not the only weapons which you have at your disposal. Anyway, if you have to do it, you could anyway hit quite hard with the edge of the shield. Anyway, what I want to point about this topic is uh, when we speak about reasonable ideas and uh, historical accuracy, we have to remember that our medieval ancestors were able to be as unreasonable in life as we are with our games. A good example is this weird two-handed dueling shield which Master Hans Talofer teaches us how to use. So yes, it's not dual wilding shields, but uh, is a two-handed shield really existed, so we are getting pretty close. Anyway, that's all. I just wanted to clarify a couple of things which were in line with my field of competence. Thanks for watching people and uh, as always, see you next time.